Khazivan, the teacher of Bukhara State University, Faculty of Foreign Languages, English Literature Department. Today we are going to continue the lecture Contemporary English Women Writers and discuss uh, the life and literary activity of Iris Murdoch and Margaret Rebel. Before starting the lecture, I want to read the characterization of the 20th century English literature uh, given in the book An Outline of English Literature by Granville Thornley and Robert Gwinnett. One of the most interesting developments in the writing of the 20th century is the greater number of female writers. Some of the, these uh, deal with essentially the same subject as men do. Also, they often are particularly interested in the feelings and consciousness of their characters. During the century, many women novelists have wanted to write about the lives, problems and special concerns of women in the modern world. So that a group of novels have appeared uh, which have women characters at their center and are written very much from women's point of view. As you see, most of the literary critics admit the fact that women writers could imprint in the history of literature their ideas and personality. Margaret Rabel and Iris Murdoch were among them. They were highly evaluated figures. Both of them were acknowledged during their lifetime and were made dame commanders of order of the British Empire. So now let's start uh, with a discussion of Iris Murdoch's life and literary activity. Iris Murdoch's life and literary activity. Early life and education. Iris Murdoch was born into Irish family in Dublin in 1990. In 1938, Iris Murdoch went up to Somerville College, Oxford, with the intention of studying English, but switched to grades, a course of study combining classics, ancient history, and philosophy. She studied philosophy as a postgraduate at Newman College, Cambridge, and in 1948, she became a fellow of St. Anna's College, Oxford, where she taught philosophy until 1963. Iris Murdoch published her first novel in 1954. This was Under the Net, a comedy. Most of her novels, however, are more philosophical than comic. They have a wide range of themes and show the serious novels can still become bestsellers. Among her best known works are The Bell, The Red and the Green, The Black Prince, A Verd Child, The Sea, The Sea, The Good Apprentice, The Book and the Brotherhood, The Message to the Planet, The Green Knight and Jackson's Dilemma. Uh, her best-known work, The Bell, a novel set in a lay religious community situated next to the enclosed order of Benedictine nuns in Gloucestershire. The Red and the Green, a novel about the Irish Rebellion in 1916. The Black Prince, the work about aging London author Bradley Person, who falls in love with the daughter of his friend and literary rival. A Word Child, the book with, which charts the trials and tribulations of Hilary Bird as he attempts to recover his soul from the misery of his troubled past. The Sea, the sea a brilliant satire on the pomposity of certain breed of theatre director, he sees himself as a prosperous figure who has adjusted the magic of the stage and his successful career in the London in order to become a hermit. Her final novels include 
The Good Apprentice, a novel about Edward Boltram, a college student living in London, who gives his best friend Mark a sandwich laced with a hallucinogenic drug for a joke. After Mark, still high, falls to his death from a window. Edward is wrecked with guilt and depression. The book and the Brotherhood is the story of a group of close friends living in England in the 1980s. The message to planet, the novel which centers on Marcus Waller, a charismatic former mathematician and painter who has abandoned both these pursuits and on a group of London friends, former associate of him, with whom he has broken off contact, and The Green Knight, a dense allegory based on the medieval poem Sir Gavain and the Green Knight, Metaphysics as a Guide to Morals, is a survey of ethics in the age of religious decline and technological advance. And the last novel, Jackson's Dilemma, a comedy about Edward and Marion, the couple who are at the center of the story. They are led by events to learn the truth about themselves. In the process, their friends and lovers are forced to make new choices and see things as they are. Philosophy of her works Murdoch is always concerned with philosophical and moral problems of good and bad, right and wrong, art and life, and the nature of truth. Her novels, in their attention and generosity to their inner lives of individuals, follow the tradition of novels like Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, George Eliot, and Proust, besides showing an abiding love of Shakespeare. There is, however, great variety in her achievement and the richly layered structure and compelling realistic comic imagination. Iris Murdoch was awarded honorary degrees by the University of Bath, University of Cambridge, Kingston University and was elected a foreign honorary member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in the 1982. In the 1987, she was made a Dame Commander of Order of the British Empire. The Sea, the Sea as a Psychological Novel The book was published in 1978 and it was Iris Murdoch's 19th novel. The same year, the novel won the Booker Prize. According to Iris Murdoch's biography, Peter J. Conrady, the title of the novel was taken from Dina Fon's work. This work became ultimate source of the title of Iris Murdoch's novel. In Dina Fon's work, Anabasis, the exclamation, the sea, the sea, was the shout of happiness given by the roaming 10,000 Greeks when in 401 BC they caught sight of the Black Sea from Mount Tich in Trebizon, the city on the Black Sea coast in Turkey, and realized they were saved from death. The Sea the Sea is a tale of the strange obsessions that haunt a self-satisfied playwright and director as he begins to write his memoirs. Murdoch's novel exposes the motivations and drives her characters the vanity, jealousy and lack of compassion behind the disguises they present to the world. Charles Araby, its central figure, decided to withdraw from the world and live in isolation in a house by the sea. While there, he encounters his first love, Mary Hartley Fitch, 
whom he has not seen since his love affair with her as an adolescent. Although she is almost unrecognizable in old age and outside his theatrical world, well, he becomes obsessed by her, idealizing his former relationship with her and attempting to persuade her to escape with him. His inability to recognize the egotism and selfishness of his own romantic ideals is at the heart of the novel. After the partial and unsuccessful kidnapping of Miss Fitch by Aerobie, he is left to mull over her rejection in a self-obsessional and self-aggrandizing manner over the space of several chapters. In exposing the jumble uh, of motivations that drive Aruby and the other characters, Iris Murdoch lays bare the truths of untruths, the human vanity, jealousy and lack of compassion behind the disguises they present to the world. Play it out against the vividly rendered landscape and filled with allusions to myth and magic, Child's confrontation with the tidal rips of love and forgiveness is one of Murdoch's most moving and powerful novels. Margaret Drabble's Life and Literary Activity Early Life and Schooling Margaret Drabble was born in 1939 in Sheffield, England, into the educated family. Her father was an advocate and writer John F. Drabble, and her mother was a teacher. Kathleen Mary. She was educated at the Mount School, York, and Newnham College, Cambridge. Margaret published her first novel, A Summer Bird Cage, a short first person account of the relationship between two young graduate sisters, in 1963. This was followed by the Garrick Year. Uh, with a theatrical background, The Millstone, the story of a young academic unmarried mother, Jerusalem the Golden, about the social ambitions of a girl who comes to London from the north of England, The Waterfall, the story of a passionate and adulterous love affair, The Needle's Eyes, which depict an heiress who takes voluntary poverty upon herself, the Realms of Gold, about a career woman who has achieved international recognition as an archaeologist. The Ice Age, a condition of England novel that documents the effect of the oil crisis on social attitude. And The Middle Ground tells the story of a journalist who comes to dub her feminist creed. She published, she published a trilogy of novels, The Radiant Way, uh, A Natural Curiosity, and The Gates of Ivory, which follows the fortunes of three women friends through the social and political changes in Britain in the 1980s, opening up in the last volume to a vision of war-torn Cambodia. The Witch of Exmoor is a modern family chronicle inspired by a premise borrowed from J. Rawls. It takes a different direction, looking at family, madness, closeness and distance in a tragic comedy of the end of the century. Her last works include The Peppered Moth, The Seven Sisters, The Red Queen, The Sea Lady, the Pure Gold Baby, The Dark Flood Rises. Drabble published about 20 novels. Uh, uh, she has also created non-fiction works. A Writer's Britain is a book describing a beautiful landscape of Britain as seen by writers of different regions and periods. 
Angus Wilson, a biography, the colorful, controversial life story of Angus Wilson, one of the most brilliant writers to emerge after World War II. Drabble created the Oxford Companion to English Literature. From 1970 till 1985, Drabble worked on the Literary Dictionary. It includes biographies of prominent historical and leading contemporary writers in the English language and other world-renowned writers. The Millstone as a Feminist Novel Set in not quite yet swinging London, the Millstone focuses on the life of Rosamond Stacy, an attractive Cambridge graduate who is writing her thesis on early English poetry while living alone in the spacious flat of her parents, who have gone to Africa for a year on a philanthropic mission. While Rosamond is convinced of both her her qualities as a literary historian and her socialist and in particular Fabian ideals, she is rather reluctant when it comes to relationship with men. To avoid being considered old-fashioned or prickish, she has managed to make her small but intimate circle of friends believe that she is carrying on with two men at the same time, whereas in fact she is still a virgin and only enjoys her two male friends' company. One day in a pub, Rosamond meets George Matthews, a newsreader for BBC Radio, and at once feels attracted to him. They spend the night together, too shy to tell him that she has fallen in love with him, she lets George vanish from, from her life as quickly as he entered it. In the ensuing months, only occasionally listening to his voice on the radio. When she learns that she is pregnant, the whole world changes. New world opens up to her. While she decides against telling George or writing to her par parents in order not to unnecessarily upset them, she hopes she will get moral support from her sister Beatrice and her husband, who have three small children themselves. However, in a letter to her sister, Beatrice expresses her shock and disbelief and urges Rosamond either to have an abortion or to give birth to the baby and put it up for adoption immediately afterwards and then carry on with her life and academic career, as if nothing has happened. After a half-hearted attempt at in inducing a miscarriage, she decides to have the baby and be one of the women Bernard Shaw refers to as women who want children but no husband. Her friends take the news well and without asking too many questions about the identity of the father, who they secretly assume must be one of her two lovers, Rosa Moon, however, stops seeing the two men and focuses on her work and her pregnancy. She finds a true friend in Lydia Reynolds, a young novelist who happily takes her up on her offer to share her flat with her in return for, her, for the occasional babysitting job once her child has been born. For the first time in her life, Rosamund has to deal with the National Health Service and all its inadequacies. When her daughter is born, she decided to name her Octavia, after Octavia Hill. Octavia Hill was an English social reformer whose main concern was the welfare of the inhabitants of cities, especially London, in the second half of the 19th century. When she is only a few months old, Octavia is found to have a serious condition of the pulmonary artery and surgery is unavoidable. 
However, the operation turns out to be successful and Rosamond is allowed to take her daughter home after weeks of anxiety. Lydia, who is now having an affair with one of her Rosamond's former lovers, still lives with her even after Octavia, just for a few minutes left to her own devices, she has crawled into Lydia's room and partly ripped, partly chewed up a major part of the typescript of her new novel. Rosamond's parents are informed about the existence of their grandchild though a letter, through a letter from Octavia's surgeon, who happens to be an old acquaintance of theirs, but they tactfully decided not to disturb their daughter's new life and stay abroad for another year rather than return for Christmas as planned. The final scene of the novel takes place late at night on Christmas Eve, when Rosamond has to go to an all-night chemist near her flat to get some medicine for Octavia. There, she has a chance meeting with George and again invites him up to her flat. Rosamond lies about the age of Octavia so that George will not suspect fact that she might be his. Reluctantly, George is persuaded to have a look at the sleeping Octavia, pronounces her a beautiful baby and leaves again. You got introduced with the ideas of feminism, with life and interactivity of Muriel Spark, Angela Carter, Iris Murdoch and Margaret Drabble. And now you have information for thinking and building your own ideas connected with the topic 20th century English women writers. Thank you so much.